the lovelies, it's Kaya, and today I'm just doing a video sort of about people who are just getting started in the goth subculture and are maybe a little bit lost because there is a lot to it and there's a lot of conflicting information out there and stuff and you have, you know, the elitist goths who will just try to sort of tell you that you have to do certain things to be goth and everything and it can get really confusing and I just want to try to help a little bit where I can. So I think the first most important thing whenever you're getting into the goth subculture is just try to find out as much about it as possible. There's so much history and stuff to it that I wouldn't be able to cover it all in this video. It just wouldn't be possible. So there are loads of blogs and websites and all sorts of things out there, tons of information for you, and I'm going to be providing links for some of that in the description below. Uh, there's a lovely woman called Gillian Venters, which is, uh, she's what the community sort of describes as an elder goth, which is basically an older person who is goth, you know, probably someone who's been around since it first started, um, because it, it has been around for much longer than I've been alive, basically. And, um, yeah, she has loads of helpful, um, information. She has a website, book, and YouTube channel under the name Gothic Charm School. There's not a lot on the YouTube channel. There are four videos that I think I've seen, maybe more, but there's a few videos on there that are really great to watch. She has a website, she has a book. Uh, as well as that, there's a lot of great blogs and such. One that I really like um, that used to run was called The Ultimate Goth Guide. And uh, unfortunately, that's not active anymore. And the girl who ran it has actually, I believe, left the goth subculture. I don't know if she's maybe still alternative, but she, I believe she left goth, which is sad. But there's still so much information on there. Loads of things for, like, you know, the history and different bands and music and everything. So I'll leave a whole bunch of links down below for you guys so you can just sit and read through everything and just try to educate yourselves on, you know, the goth subculture. <laughs> So goth is sort of born out of a music movement and um, that is important to respect and stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, not everyone is going to absolutely love goth music, especially people who sort of didn't grow up with it. I know, you know, everyone's sort of listening to newer music these days and um, it's okay if you don't know much goth about goth music, but do try to listen to some of it and learn about it and, you know, find out where goth really came from because I think it's important to respect that, you know, we wouldn't have the fun fashion and everything else if it weren't for that movement, I don't think. So, you know, because there are three parts, I think, to sort of being a goth, as <laughs> as you'd say, and I think that's the music, the fashion, and just the lifestyle, basically, you know, just the interest in the darker things, and, you know, you'll find a lot of gothy types do have a lot of similar interests, and um, it's great if you're, like, if you really, really love the fashion and the sort of lifestyle, but, you know, you do have to sort of respect the music and try to listen to it a little bit. I'm not going to go into goth bands on this channel because honestly people get like really really like snippy and angry and that's where the elitists come in and it's just not fun but they're in the links that I've left there will be a whole bunch of information so you can kind of read up about it more than I could tell you in this video anyway. Next up whenever people are getting into goth they always kind of ask me about clothes. Where do you get your clothes? Where do you find this? Where do you find that? What brands do you like? And um, I plan on doing a video at some point on my favourite goth clothing brands and that'll give you a little sort of peek into my wardrobe. Uh, but one important thing to remember is you don't need to buy brand goth clothing because for one it can be quite expensive and for another there's kind of what's referred to as like a mall goth or a like someone who's wearing a goth in a box kit and that's basically you know going into any sort of store like you know Hot Topic or whatever and basically just buying a ready-made goth outfit which you know is it's fine sometimes but it does kind of end up having everyone look very similar and it kind of can be quite obvious that you're very new to the goth subculture if you just buy the most sort of basic first goth outfit you find on the rack at Hot Topic or whatever. I think it's important with goth, it's like it was really born out of DIY because back when it first started there were no goth brands, you know, people had to like make their own. So most of my clothes, I, ha I do have like quite a few really nice pieces from different like gothy brands that I adore. But like most of my clothes would come from the likes of eBay. For instance, this shirt, everyone goes nuts about this shirt. I found this on eBay, it was less than a tenner, it was really cheap. And uh, everyone loves it. And I didn't find this listed as goth. This isn't something that's labeled as goth. It was just, you know, like black shirt with lace overlay, something boring named like that. But obviously it works really well as a nice gothy top. So things like that are so important. You can go on eBay and literally just go into the clothing section and search the word goth and millions and millions and millions of things will come up and you can kind of just search through and find things. But it's also things that aren't labeled goth will A, be probably a lot cheaper and B, can work really, really well if you know how to style it. So don't just search goth dress, search, you know, like black long dress, you know, black ruffled skirt, you know, black lacy blouse, things like that. You know, if you search black, if that's what you're going for, most goths do. <laughs> and then just, you know, the actual clothing item you're looking for, 
about five billion things will come up and they're all pretty damn cheap and you can really like accessorize them and style them to be a really awesome goth outfit. So that's like the best advice I can give when getting into the fashion, especially if you're on a budget and you can't just go out and buy like a fabulous giant goth wardrobe straight away. Collect little pieces from places like that. Another big thing, thrift stores. I always kind of forget to go to thrift st stores myself because the ones in my area don't tend to have anything that great, unfortunately. It tends to be like old lady like pink pantsuits, <laughs> which is unfortunate, but most people I know have so much luck with thrifting, you can find the most awesome things in like charity shops and thrift shops. So make sure to go around and as I say, keep your eyes open. Don't be looking f like out just for something that is goth. Look for things that you could style into a really great goth outfit, even if it's not necessarily goth itself. Because you can find so much that way and you will honestly have a much easier time building a wardrobe if you get out of this mindset that everything you wear has to be labelled goth. So if you're really just getting into goth and you really don't know where to begin and you find yourself extremely lost, the best advice I can give is just find things that inspire you because that's how I started and when, like the best way I find to do it is just like search places like Tumblr and Pinterest and like all different websites and search different tags because you know there isn't just goth, there's so many little like mini subcategories of goth, you know you've got cyber goth, trad goth, gothic lolita, death rock, and like just a million, there's so many different types of like little mini sort of goth categories and it's really great to sort of find out about a bunch of those if you can. I'll try to find a website that lists a whole bunch of different um, like goth subcategories. So I would really recommend first of all reading up on all the different types of goth and you know seeing what, which one sort of fits the style that you personally like. And remember you don't have to stick to one, you can mix and match different elements from all these different types of goth. I mean some things aren't going to go great together, other things will. It's just about finding your own personal style. Which leads me on to my next point, as I say, searching places like Tumblr and stuff and just finding like pictures and stuff of other goths whose style you really love. Never ever like look at a picture of one person and just try to replicate them exactly because you should be yourself and also that it tends not to be appreciated by the person if you're like become a clone of them it can be really uncomfortable. So take different elements from different people and different pictures and build your own goth look, you know? Never try to just straight up be someone else. That person already exists. Don't need another one of them. We need you to create someone new. So just find all the pictures you can. And what I used to do, I think Pinterest actually would be a really good place to do it now, but whenever I was in school, I literally just had a folder on my computer full of hundreds and it's probably still on one of my computers, it's kind of followed me through all my computers, but it was just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of like hair I liked, makeup I liked, eyebrows, fashion, you know, pictures, like even just like the f I like the whole photo, just things like that and it was just absolutely full and in that way I was able to sort of look at all these pictures and I would just sit and browse through and just pick out little details that I liked of like, you know, each fashion and each picture and each person and just end up building my own sort of looks from that. And that's the best way to sort of get inspiration. If you have really no idea what you're doing, you don't know what makeup you want to do, you don't know what clothes you want to wear, you don't know what you want to do with your hair, you just know that you're into the sort of darker fashion, it's really great to just have a real good hunt. So read up about all goth and then find your, all your inspiration, just have it all laid out there, delve into it for a while, and then you'll come out knowing a lot more what you want to do with yourself. Another thing with going goth is, I say going goth, it's not something you wake up one day and decide to do, it's not like, I'm going to be goth today. I think it's something that's really ingrained in you, it's just when you start expressing it, you know, may change and some people just dive in face first, some people build up and um, regardless of what way that goes, one thing you're going to have to accept is people probably will treat you differently, whether it's your family or your friends or just people on the street, people often do react negatively to this way of, of being, basically. I was gonna say dressing, but you know, it's your personality and everything as well. And that is really unfortunate. Um, I, I just want everyone to remember that family can be annoying with it and like you'll almost always have people t trying to tell you it's a fizz. One of my teachers actually still owes me a tenner because she said she bet, like she bet me that I wouldn't still look this way, you know, after I'd left school and everything. I swear, I am so tempted <laughs> to go up to that school and be like, 10 pounds please, overdue. But um, yeah, like everyone will try to tell you it's a phase and you'll grow out of it and you won't be that way. Just ignore them. Parents are kind of tricky, you know, if they're like really, really on your ass about it, you know, just like not wanting you to be that way. I do plan on doing like a video sometime soon, basically a video for the parents of people going goth if you can get your parents to watch it because I know so many people are struggling with it and I'd like to sort of help with that. Um, but that's a future project, pro bleh, project. <laughs>
But yeah, so with your parents, the best you can do is just try to convince them that, you know, you being goth does not mean you're a Satanist, you're not in a cult, you're not depressed, you're not self-harming, you're not, you know, doing all these things that people immediately think goth is. Just, you know, you just have to explain to your parents you're still their happy, normal child, you just happen to like dressing this way and it's not hurting anyone. In terms of friends, you might lose friends. I lost friends. Like, I started getting into the sort of like dressing differently really, really, really young and I remember being about nine or so and that's when I started being able to sort of express myself a bit more, choose some more, more of my own clothes. And um, the people I was friends with, I've been friends with since I was about four or five uh, because like we all went to the same school which like traveled through kindergarten upwards. I stayed in that school till I was 13, I think. And I think around nine or 10, people did just start, like, stop inviting me places, you know, everyone would go hang out and I wouldn't be invited and stuff, and people just got really weird, and it did, it broke my heart, and it will, it's it's so hard to lose friends, but the thing is, like, if they're willing to stop being friends with you and stop inviting you places just because of how you look, then they're not good friends in the first place. I mean, whenever I was really, really young, I thought I would be friends with those people for my whole life, but whenever I left that school, no one even bothered to contact me, like, not one person bothered their arse to, like, contact me and see how I was doing or anything, so, honestly, if if they're like that, you don't need them in your life. Like, you know, if someone's gonna only be friends with you based on, like, if you look the way they want you to, you don't need that, you know? So, losing friends, it hurts, and I hope it doesn't happen to anyone. I hope none of you end up sort of you know, finding yourself more only to find that your friends are abandoning you because it sucks, but as much as it hurts you have to remember you're probably better off because what's the point in having assholes like that in your life in the first place, really? And in terms of just people on the street staring and yelling abuse and all the rest, I'm sure you've all seen my what not to say to goth girls video, you just have to grow thick skin and, you know, realise that it's gonna happen no matter what, so you might as well just shrug it off and ignore it and learn to laugh at it. Uh, which is what that video is about, just all the silly things that get said and yelled and all sorts. Just try your best to ignore it, because people are going to be assholes no matter what, so just enjoy yourself, ignore them. They're just bitter because they're too afraid to be anything but their boring little selves. And my last surf tip, I think, if you're just getting into goth, is like start slow with your makeup. Don't try to dive right in and do anything mental, and if you do, sort of practice you know, in your room when you don't have anywhere to go for the first while, just to get a feel for it, because it can be tricky when you start out, like, especially with, like, more elaborate shapes and anything anything like that. And uh, I notice a lot of people have issues with black lipstick being, like, patchy and smudgy and stuff. I have a tutorial on my channel for black lipstick that, like, you know, it's nice and neat and it stays put, like, it does not budge. So if you want to experiment with things like that, then check that out. Okay, so my camera's about to die, so I must go, but um, hopefully this little bit of advice helped you a bit. It's just some basic pointers. As I say, all the reading material I've left in the description will be way more helpful to you. It's best just to really, really dive into that and just learn about it and find your inspiration. So, my last tip for getting into the goth subculture is subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because I'll be putting out lots of tutorials and more fun videos like this and all the rest. So, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks, guys. Bye!